All right, welcome back to AmbulSmith.com. We're gonna do a detailed breakdown of the Korean Max 2 assault rifle, which is the civilian version of the K2, which they use over there. When we look at the rifle, right here, we have a, a knurled piece, which is attached to the mainspring. There's a little flip-up detent to keep it from unlocking the action. Just push it forward. And the rifle breaks open like this. We got the mainspring, charging handle, the piston, and bolt carrier group. Let me take a sling off of it here so we can separate the two halves. When we flip it over, there's this a, almost too well made. There. So it breaks down basically like an AR-15, but with a with some slight differences. And what I want to do is go over each of the individual parts. I'm gonna go ahead and break the bolt down for you. And we're gonna go over everything. Right, here's the bolt to the to the Daewoo. If we look at it, it's almost identical to the AR-15. Same locking lug setup and everything. So for here, this tailpiece is a lot longer to accommodate the firing pin. But it breaks down the same way. Push this pin out. Here's your extractor, which opens up the inside of the bolt for cleaning. What's nice about this rifle is it's piston driven. So the inside of the bolt carrier doesn't get all gummed up with carbon and stuff like the AR-15 on the um, impulse gas system. And we're gonna take a look at each one of these parts and we're gonna show you the similarities and differences between this and the standard AR-15 M16 series of rifles. Here's a bolt carrier. The bulk here is very similar to the AR-15, so it doesn't have a gas key on it. This is where the the actual piston recesses into it, like this. But if we look on the inside of the bulk carrier, we can see after even shooting 50, 60 rounds rapid fire, there's absolutely no carbon buildup whatsoever in this bulk carrier, which is really nice. And right here. Right here is where the ejector comes through in order to, where is it, there it is, in order to strike the case and kick it out of the rifle. Very slick setup. When we reassemble it, it reassembles identically to the AR-15. This retaining pin is a little wore out. There. Once you get it in, you're all set. And you just drop the, the the piston on it, and you're all set to reassemble the rifle. Okay, right, here's the the gas piston for the Daewoo with the bolt carrier assembly completely put back together. It looks like this. Here's one from an AK-47. Basically, they're so nearly identical except for the bolt. Um, here is an independent piece, whereas in here, it's part of an entire assembly group. And the charging handle detaches from here as well, where on the AK-47, it's a permanent piece. So you can see where the, the South Koreans took the best of both worlds here on um, the piston driven system and the AR-15 bolt system here and combined them together to make um, a fairly reliable system. In fact, the Koreans came out with this before piston driven AR-15s became cool. Okay, here's the bolt carrier group, the whole system 
assembled. And here's the, the mainspring. We see it's real similar to the AK-47. It has a, a mainspring, but instead of um, being stamped parts, these parts here are cut on the lathe. This is, you can disassemble this without any problems. What I really want to show you is what makes this rifle have such a high RPM other than the gas system. When you look at the rifle, uh, especially the lower receiver, it's different in many respects to the AK-47 and the AR-15. What we have here is the trigger mechanism, which is identical to the AR-15, except for the full auto version, the auto sear goes here instead of back here, like on the AR-15. But when we look back here, there is a spring. This is a rebound spring. And when the rifle is fired, the bulk carrier hits this and is actually bounced back forward. That's what gives this thing such a high RPM. If it wasn't for this, I think your maximum rate of fire on this thing probably about 700, 750 rounds a minute. But with this rebound spring here, it gives an extremely high RPM. Yeah, great clouds. So here, this the rest of the, the upper receiver here. And here's the gas plug. And this is written in Korean, so I really don't exactly know what it says. But there's four positions, low, medium, high, and uh, there's off. But you gotta be really careful with this rifle. If you don't have this thing locked in like it should be, it'll shoot out and you'll lose it. I know, I already lost one, I had to buy another one. But, once it's in, make sure it's locked. Pull on it, it should not be straight up and down, because if we look at it, this should not be straight up and down. It should be to the side in a couple of different angles. It should never be straight up and down, because if it is, it means these locking lugs here are not grabbing anything. Now it takes a standard M16 bayonet, whether it's the uh, M7 or the M9, any of the, any of the NATO bayonet or M16 AR-15 bayonets. And this front sling swivel pivots 180 degrees, maybe just slightly more. Now to get the hand guards off, all you have to do is take this screw out, slide this forward and take it off. The barrel is probably a little bit thicker than um, an a M16 A2 barrel, the government style contour, but not by much. And it has a recess here, and this is for the M203 that they use over there. It's their version. I believe they use um, a license to build the same one that we have, because the Daewoo also makes the M16. The South Korean Army has quite a variety in their weapon systems. So let's go ahead and throw this thing back together. It's pretty simple. Just take the bulk carrier and a piston, put them together. Just watch the bolt, make sure it doesn't try to close on you. Don't throw it all the way in because you still have to put your charging handle in. All you gotta do is insert the spring. Match up the lower and upper receivers. Push your takedown pin. Then do a function check. The rifle is properly reassembled, it's ready to go. There's a few things in this rifle that you gotta watch out for. You gotta make sure that the extractor retaining pin is recessed on both sides. Otherwise, it can cause a slight hang up and it'll cause this rifle to double feed. Other than that, this thing runs great. 
Well, that's pretty much the overview of the the, the Daewoo Max 2. And like I said in the other video that we shot it with, the stock folds on it like this because we don't have a buffer tube assembly like we do in the AR-15.